everybody it's me sandy oh what's going on with my hair <laughs> so today is the second day in my new craft room i've turned my table a little bit so that you can see my fake fake fireplace fake z <laughs> z sent me a message going what are you doing putting a fireplace next to your all your yarn trust me, it's fake it's not real it's fake <laughs> so anyway um except now you kind of see a glare in here so i don't know i'll figure it all out <laughs> um so i wanted to talk about some real life stuff right and i also have a few questions that people have been asking me because remember i was going to do a q a well madonna has decided to ask all the questions for everybody. <laughs> so I'll try and answer the best as I can uh, for, the, for some of that. Um, and then, yeah, I just want to talk about a few things that are kind of going on, you know, with me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so Madonna wants to know, what's my favorite hobby? Crochet. <laughs> crochet is my number one hobby at the moment. <clears throat> um, I used to do acrylic pour paintings. Uh, I used to do, um, well, my masks and the power tags. Um, writing was another hobby. Um, what else? Pretty much any craft I could get my hands on, uh, mostly, until I got really into crochet. And now crochet has kind of taken over my life. So there's that. Okay, do I have any trips coming up? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, there was a, another another question that kind of came up along that lines and it was um, am I planning on taking a trip to the States to meet people <sighs> okay little storyline here I as of right now possibly can't go to the States <gasps> What? I'm not a criminal, <laughs> but um, what happened was, is I was dating somebody down in Seattle for a very brief time. I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, that, I, like, I, I wasn't working... Um, I wasn't, I was kind of in between houses. Uh, it was shortly after my husband passed away, uh, like a year and a half afterwards or whatever, that I kind of started trying to do the date thing because I felt pressured. Everybody was saying, you know, just move on with your life and all this kind of crap. So um, in my mind, if I had dated somebody that was far enough away that I didn't think it was going to be serious, it was just kind of a thing, whatever, I wasn't even into it. It was just, it was a grieving, stupid thing, right? Everybody grieves differently, and I just needed that comfort, but uh, it ended up not even being that. It was just, it was a bad situation. But anyway, so I was going down to the States quite often. And they stopped me and I had my sister and my niece with me. They were going, she was engaged to somebody down in Blaine. And so I was going to drop her off at her fiance's house. And um, they stopped me. They fingerprinted me, treated me like I was a terrorist. They had two big guards walk me into a room with a woman that was putting on gloves 
and my sister was going like what is going on I'm sitting there freaking out like what is happening and uh, I mean we can laugh about it now but at the time um, I was losing it and they said that I they they literally escorted me they left my sister and my niece at the station there or at the border and her fiance had to go and pick her up they literally escorted me off the premises back into Canada. They said that because I was going down so often, I was a flight risk. And that they figured that A, I couldn't prove ties to Canada. I had no actual address at the time. I was kind of couch surfing for a little bit. B, I didn't have a job. Um, I couldn't prove that I was working in Canada. And uh, <clears throat> so they said that I was a flight risk and that I was not allowed back in the States until I could prove at least six months worth of ties to Canada. Um, I kind of went, F you. And... Um, I, I could not believe the way I was treated. Uh, it was horrible. They tore my car apart and didn't put anything back together. And then they shipped me back to Canada. And I was so angry and horrified that I was fingerprinted and that they just treated me like I was a criminal that I said, I'm not going back. Like, forget it. It's not worth it. I broke up with the guy. I told him, you know what, I don't need this crap. And uh, and I never went back to the U.S. And that was... Eight years ago? Yeah, I think it was eight years ago. Um, so I never fixed the problem. Right? So now... Um, George and I are engaged. I still don't have my name on anything to prove that I lived here, right? Like, I don't have my name on the house. I don't have I, nothing. So I can't even prove ties to Canada again, <laughs> other than I'm getting a disability. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. So I... I would like to go down to the States to visit. I would like to go down there and shop. I would love to go down there and meet people um, that are on my channel. But for me, um, I don't want to take the chance that it's going to happen again and that um, they're going to treat me like that. I was horrified. I was just, I could not believe that they treated me that way. You know, um, and it just, to me, it wasn't worth going back. So, there's that. Um, once George and I get married, whenever that's going to happen, uh, then I'll have ties to Canada. And maybe I will actually go and try that. So, this when we were talking about doing a cruise and everything, I was like, yeah, I would love to do that. And then I remembered, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I might not be able to. So anyway, so that was kind of a downer. But uh, yeah, so there you go. Long version. That was like 10 minutes of life that you will never get back. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, Okay, so uh, Madonna also asked, when are you happiest? That's a really tough question. Um, <sighs> wow. I think I'm, I'm really happy when George and I actually get to go and do stuff together. Um, we used to go on fishing trips and that that to me was great because he left his phone at home 
We didn't get bothered by his phone ringing for his business. Um, we didn't have to worry about anything. We just went and relaxed and had a great time. Um, being around my kids. <sighs> Tia makes me laugh so much. And when we laugh, we laugh hard. Like hard. <laughs> um, and it's just such a stress relief. You know, when I'm with my sister, my sister and I, we are the best of friends. And she just, same thing. We just laugh and laugh and laugh. And it just, being around family, for the most part, it makes me very happy. Um, when things aren't all, you know, crazy and, uh, and people, are, you know, family members are angry at each other and fighting and all of that. When it's not like that, it, it's all great, right? And we just have a great time together. We just, laughter is a huge thing with us. So, yeah. Um, so that's pretty much my happiest time, I think. Uh, what would be my perfect day? My perfect day. Oh, <clears throat> again, hard question. I think my perfect day would be no drama, no pain. Um, if I could actually have a day where I had no pain and I could do what I could do when I was in my 20s without feeling like my body was betraying me um, and yeah. I think that would be my perfect day and and being able to have my family around me and be able to go for a hike go paddling go just go and do stuff without having to worry about painkillers and stomach pills and um, whether or not I'm going to hurt the next day. Um, and being able to go and do something that I would be afraid of doing right now. Whether that's bungee jumping or river rafting or jumping out of an airplane or paragliding or you know, something like that. Like going against all my fears and doing that with my family. I think that would be the perfect day. Gosh, the memories. Oh my God. Ah, yeah. Um, most memorable birthday. Well, that would probably be two years ago when that happened. Um, it was Mother's Day is in May and my birthday is in May. It's within a few days apart. Um, my birthday's on May 15th and on Mother's Day weekend, we went to Chilliwack to visit George's mom and we also went and saw my kids. Well, before we actually went to visit anybody, we were at the hotel room, we had just checked in, and we went to the mall for something to do. And the mall just happened to have the one jewelry store there that is my absolute favorite. Um, and I was joking around with George, and I says, come on, let's go, just go check things out, right? Well, in this mall in Coquitlam, the whole square at, like you go up the escalator and right in right above the at, at the escalator there's four jewelry stores 
right there. Well, the one jewelry store was my favorite. So I went in there. They make gorgeous rings. I just love looking at their rings because they are so unique. It's called Delaney Jewelers. And uh, their stuff is just amazing. So I just wanted to go and look. Well, I happened to see this ring. I don't know if you guys can, whoops, you see that? Ooh. Okay, it's a sapphire. So I happened to see this ring and I was like, oh, they had a gold one. I don't like look, yellow gold. I like white gold and silver. So I, um, I saw the, the gold one first and I fell in love with it. But I says, it's too bad that you don't have it in white gold. So he showed me this ring and I was like, oh, I like that. And it's, it's hard for you to see, but the, these are on a slant going down. I don't know if you guys can see that. And it is just a really unique way of doing the ring. And um, I was just like, oh, that's so pretty. So, of course, I had to try it on. And I was just looking at it going, you know, doing the whole woman thing like, oh, mm, yeah. And uh, I was like, oh, this is so pretty. And George says, oh, you like that? And I was like, yeah, it's really nice. And I says, in a perfect world, right? It's pretty expensive. <laughs> so I went and I walked around. I was looking at other things. And <laughs> little did I know. So I'm looking around at other rings. And he says, you really like that ring, eh? And I said, yeah, it's really beautiful. I says, but it's so expensive and, you know, whatever. It's an engagement ring. It's like, whatever. And uh, so we went and we looked at all the other jewelry stores. And he says, well, come back and, and, and look at this stuff again. <clears throat> okay. So the owner comes out and says, here you go. Gives the box to George. I'm like, is this a birthday present? Like, what is this? Mother's Day gift? He gets down on his knee in the jewelry store. And he says, I guess I better make this official. I'm like, stop it. Get up. Like, what are you doing? And he's like, will you marry me? I thought, I'm being punked. Like, <laughs> like. A few colorful words came out of my mouth and I was like, get up, you, stop being an ass, get up. And he says, I'm serious. And he pulls out this ring. And I was like, are you for real? Like what? I didn't do this because I was trying to pressure you. And he says, are you going to give me an answer? <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> And everybody in the store was clapping and and I was like this is not hap this is this for real <laughs> so he puts the ring on my finger and the ring was a bit big so they put a spacer inside and that's why we went walking around he was trying to waste time and give the guy time to get the spacer on there so it would fit me properly because he told the guy, we don't live here. We live in Nanaimo. So I was just like, I, I can't believe this just happened. Like, what? So, so, um, so yeah, so I, of course, I, I was looking at my ring the whole, all day. Um, we called my kids and we asked them if they would go out for lunch with us. And then we announced that we were getting engaged or we got engaged and then we went and told his mom and his mom said 
Well, it's about time. <laughs> so we were like, oh, okay. She says, we've, we've been waiting for this to happen. We knew it was going to happen eventually. <laughs> it was like, oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> so, yes. So that was my most memorable birthday. Yes. Um... Okay, so the next question Madonna wanted to know was, uh, where do you like to go out to eat? Well, sushi is my number one. Uh, and then uh, Vietnamese food, pho, is my number two. Um, any Asian food really is it for me. Like, I, I could live on Asian food. And then Mexican food. Oh, battery's about to die. Hold that thought. A few minutes later. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so I love Asian food and Mexican food. Like, a lot. <laughs> so, uh, dim sum, huge. I love dim sum. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of places here that you can get it. There's only one place here uh, in Nanaimo, but down in Victoria, apparently there's a lot, there's like a Chinatown. So, but I don't get down there very often because Tia is the only one that will eat dim sum with me. So, um, George will go, but he's not a huge fan. So, yeah, that sucks. Oh well. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, Madonna was asking because in a couple videos back, I was saying that Pe um, Petra had sent me a card and saying that she doesn't want me to change. That if I get to be like a, a thousand sub subscribers and over. Uh, you know, when I get up there in subscribers that she doesn't want me to change who I am, right? <laughs> Madonna says, what does Petra think that you're going to change into? <laughs> well, I don't know. <laughs> like, um, maybe she thinks that I'm going to become a little too commercialized, you know, um, a little too fake. Uh, you know, to, I don't know, cut and dry, you know, whatever. Um, she just, she just wanted me to stay the same, you know, stay the course and to be myself and to, you know, show my emotion and, you know, everything that I've been doing up to this point, right? I don't see that changing any, you know, um, so, yeah, I think I'll, I'll still say, <sighs> yep, I'll still stay the same. <laughs> okay, now Tina, she's asking, how long have you been crocheting and who taught me? Okay, by all rights, my mom should have taught me, but unfortunately we ran out of time. And when she was alive, I wasn't into crochet. Uh, I wasn't even into crafts. It wasn't until she passed away that I started getting into it. Um, I have to give my niece Michelle rights to teaching me how to crochet. My mom taught Michelle and so I thought it fitting that Michelle teach me. So she actually sat down with me and taught me how to do a granny square. And I ended up doing granny square blankets um, that weren't very big. They were <laughs> more like lapgans than blankets uh, or dog blankets. <laughs> but it got me going. And then I found YouTube. And um, Yolanda was on my radar. Um, El, uh, Ellie from, I can never pronounce the name of her channel. 
I'll put it right here. Who who could who could something something? <laughs> um, I watched a lot of her stuff because it her stuff reminded me of my mom, right? So I started really picking up some of hers. How long have I been crocheting? Almost ten years. Uh, I would say, yeah, almost ten years. So doesn't seem that long hmm. interesting but I used to crochet or I used to um, do crafting at my mom's house like my mom would have a whole bunch of craft stuff out. she'd be doing my mom was an avid crafter and an avid knitter and an avid crocheter um, she at Christmas time especially she would have all their craft stuff out she would she would build a village out of cardboard cardboard and paper and um, stuff like that and flowers and snow fake snow and like uh, creativity just spilled out of poured out of her pores you know it's like it was insane what my mom could do uh, she never really looked at patterns she just looked at what she wanted to make and made it uh, that's not me. <laughs> not a, if I don't have a pattern or a video showing me what to make, I'm lost. Um, so, yeah. So it's um, it's actually kind of strange. I believe that my mom is working through me um, because the stuff that I have crocheted. I never thought in a million years by all rights being a new crocheter I would not should not have been able to make a baby dress or a, you know whatever right like by all rights like I should not have been able to do that already but my mom just took over and I it's kind of funny because I can feel it I can feel her if I can't understand a pattern, I ask her for help. And all of a sudden, wham, I'm able to figure to figure out the pattern. Um, I've made stuff that I never even thought to make. Um, but she kind of takes over and goes, eh, let's do this. Uh, you know, so... <laughs> my mom loved anything dusty rose her whole house was in dusty rose I have I'm just looking at my yarn now <laughs> going hmm I've got a lot of dusty rose <laughs> so I'm really attracted to reds now um yeah it's it's fun but it's bizarre so that was the long version <laughs> sherry was asking me in the illusions yarn what is the red and black one called i want to make a red and black shawl <sighs> um I don't really have a red and black illusions. What I do have, hang on. I have this one. This one is green and red. Uh, and this shade is 0311. Um, what else? This is a red and purple color. And this shade is 0300. But I don't have a um, black and red per se. This one, oops, 
This one's all caught up now. This one is the 0300. Um, yeah, so that's not... Uh, yeah, there's no red and black in the illusions. So, yeah. Okay. And then I got a message from Jamie that said, love your new craft space. Here's a thought. <laughs> um, since your opening line is, hello, yarnabies, instead of referring to your space as the yarn nest, call it your yarn hive. I think I'm going to do that. <laughs> this is now my yarn hive. <laughs> I think that's a brilliant idea. So um, thank you for that suggestion. I think that's great. Hmm, my yarn hive. I like it. <laughs> it's not my she shed. It's not a nest. But yeah, a yarn hive. I like that. I like that a lot. So I'll have to put a sign here saying Sandy's yarn hive. <laughs> so anyways, um, I can't really think of anything else other than I am, oh, I know what I was going to talk to you guys about. Life stuff. Um, keto. I've had some questions about keto. Keto is really not that hard. Uh, it's just a matter of doing it. I've got a whole bunch of keto books and like when I started keto, I went, when I start anything, I go full bore, all in, uh, go big or go home. And then sometimes I crash and burn and then I've got all this stuff and I'm going, what do I do with all this stuff now? Um, with keto, I went with the program. I had books. I was like, got all the food I needed. And it was really overkill. And I did it for two months and I was doing good, but I started getting bored with keto. And then of course, George wanted potatoes. And then it, I went, Oh, it, it kind of went downhill after that. But it took me a while to gain the weight back. But when I did, it kind of hit me all at once. And I know what I did wrong, right? I had too many carbs for one thing. And then I started eating junk food and I started eating baked goods, which I never do. I don't like eating baked goods. I'll bake, but I don't like eating it. Um, but I started, I think I was doing it out of boredom. And so here we are. Uh, so really keto is easy. You know, you just, you, you eat good fats. You have moderate protein and cut out whoop, and cut out your sugars, cut out all the white stuff, potatoes, rice, corn, cut out corn. Um, I think the rule of thumb is if it's grown underground, it's no good um, because, oh, it's not or is it I can't I can't remember exactly what the whole thing is but anyway corn grain stuff like that isn't any good um, potatoes rice white the white stuff the you know that kind of stuff flour uh, is no good um, so if you eat like for me, what I did was I ate a lot of bacon. I lo ate, I know people cringe at this, but um, uh, pork rinds. I'm a potato chip freak. So eating pork rinds actually helped me because I still got that crunch. It was kind of a psychological thing. Um, and you can use 
dips and stuff with pork rinds and make it easier. I, I like to do, I like to get salsa and um, um, sour cream and mix it together and then dip the pork rinds. Uh, and then eat lots of cheese, but don't overdo it on the cheese because that's where people get constipated, right? So, um, yeah, just don't eat as much cheese. You're not supposed to eat fruit, but you can have some berries, but just like, like, like a handful of berries. That's it. And don't have it a lot. Um, fruit. I am a fruit fiend as well, but it has to be the exotic kind of fruit. Like I don't like bananas, apples, and oranges. Every once in a while, I'll get a hankering for an orange. Um, like grapefruit. I like um, all the berries. <sighs> I'm bad for that. Well, that's all sucrose, right? So, um, I don't gauge whether I'm in ketosis or not because that's just such a fine line and it stresses me out so I just basically go with the foods that you're supposed to eat um I don't eat ice cream so but I did buy an ice cream maker because George loves his ice cream so all I do is I get whipping cream and um or milk or something like that and I put in some peanut butter and a little bit of vanilla and stuff and I put it in the ice cream maker oh, it's good I'm gonna do a video I call it my fluff <laughs> and it's actually really good and all it is is whipping cream and um, what is it now whipping cream and cinnamon and a little bit of nutmeg I think that's it it's been a while since I've made it you put that in a blender or not a blender sorry um, uh, a mixer like you just use a hand mixer until it whips and you eat that oh it's so good and it's so filling right and basically all it is it's it's like doing whip for like on pies and stuff. That's all it is. And you eat that for a snack at night. You know, if you get the hungers. <coughs> you eat that and you're golden, man. You can put whatever you want into it, really. But I've put peanut butter in it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's so good. Um, but anyways, I'm starting the keto train again and I'm in this weird space right now where I can't eat meat. Like I just, I can't get it past my tongue. I don't know why. Um, and of course keto is meat, right? So I'm having a bit of an issue with that. So I think what I'm going to do is bacon I think I'm okay with. Um, pepperoni I'm okay with. But having red meat, pork, um, chicken I think I'm okay. Um, and fish I think I'm okay. But red meat and pork, I, I'm just having a really tough time with it right now. So that's... I'm on the struggle bus already and I haven't even started. So I have to try and find things that I can palate. Um, it could be the diabetes that is affecting me. I'm just starting to find that some foods right now are not cohesive with me. I just, I, I, it's weird because I am a red meat person like I love my steak rare medium rare but I just can't do it right now and I don't know if it's the diabetes so comment down below if you have diabetes and you're finding that there are certain foods that you can't eat that you used to eat because man I'm starting to wonder what's going on I'm on a whole different train here 
So um, keto might be a little difficult at the moment until my body regulates and I figure out what's going to work and what isn't. So, yeah. So, and also let me know, comment down below and let me know if you want me to film my keto journey. I know that there are some people that are a crochet channel and they're doing keto and they're doing their journey. Um, I don't know if I want to do that. I don't want to bore you guys, right? So let me know. And let me know what you guys want to see. Like, what do you want me to film? Um, is there something that I'm not doing that you'd like to see? Would you like me to go to more yarn shops? Would you like me to do more yarn hauls? Um, would you like me to do more giveaways? Would you, like, tell me what you guys want, okay? Um, because this channel is all about you. It's not about me. It's all about you, okay? So let me know. Uh, inquiring, mind, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> My mouth doesn't want to work today. So I'm going to sign off now, okay? <laughs> so I will talk to you guys later. I can't wait to get your comments. I would really like to know what's what you guys want, okay? So I will talk to you later. I love you all. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Bye.